Hi folks, this is Karen Trepti, your productivity coach from Gaijin Works Coaching. I have a ton of fun doing these interviews and I know you're just going to love today's guest. Her name is Lori Rochino. She has such a long involved bio, I'm going to have to actually read it to you off my phone. <laughs> so here we go. Lori Rochino is a freelance writer and she's based in the greater Philadelphia area. Her prior background is in marketing communications, where she worked over 10 years in financial services and a variety of startup companies. So this gal is hot. Her work has appeared in Success, Huffington Post, YFS Magazine, which you'll have to tell us, is that, what does that stand for? I think it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, okay, I should have turned off my That's phone. okay. We're live here on the internet. These things happen. No big deal. Um, I think it's Young, Fabulous, Self-Employed Magazine. Oh, fun. Yeah. Okay, magazine. Self-Confidence Magazine and Examiner. She's the author of 50 Shades of Simple, which we all can use, right, as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. How to Prioritize in the Age of of information overload. She also acts as a declutter coach, design visionary to help empower women entrepreneurs overwhelmed with physical clutter in business and life by organizing them from the inside and out. Wow, Lori. So, that's quite an impressive resume, and our audience here knows that the format of these interviews is just quite casual, so who knows where we'll go with them. Mm -hmm. um, you'd written down a couple of topics, so if I glance at my phone from here or there, that's what I'm doing, folks. But welcome, Lori. We're so excited Yay. to have you on Yay. today's Yay. interview. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about you to start? Like, my goodness, you are such a successful um, corporate gal, right? So what made, you, what made you leave all that? Well, I just found that I'm very, well, first of all, um, I am appreciative of all the experiences that I had because um, I was in a variety of different roles. So I got to learn a lot. Um, and I got to collaborate with some of the best people in the field. However, I also, I also felt that there was something missing and I could do more, be more, and have more impact. So I decided to, um, I decided to take a break from it. And um, I, I did my freelance writing on the side, which I still do from time to time. But I also decided to look into this online business thing, which seemed to be the buzz. And um, yeah, that's where you and I had met on um, Marie Forleo's B-School. Um, I've, I've just heard great things about it, so I thought I'd check it out. And, you know, I met so many amazing people just, like, really killing it, which was um, both both exciting and intimidating at the same time. But um, at the same time, I just, I don't know, I don't, I don't think I could go back because there's just so much more to learn. Um, and I feel like, gosh, this, this really is, like, probably one of the best um, personal transformation experiences you can go into is to start your own business and um, yeah, see, see how it goes, see what sticks and see what doesn't. Yeah. A lot of people have said that. So while I still remember to ask you, um, I want to give you a chance to really promote yourself with that too. So are you, are you a copywriter as well, Lori? Yeah, so um, I do some, um, I still do some marketing communications writing, so copywriting for websites, and right now I am, um, I have this new um, blog ghostwriting services, so for people who don't have the time to write their blog posts or have a particular format for how they want it written, or voice, um, I could do different voices, <laughs> since I've written for different um, publications and different corporations who had a particular style and way they, that we, they wanted to communicate with their target audience. Um, just, you can definitely check it out on laurierochino.com. Um, just um, hit one of the options. I have three options. I have like a, um, basically a standard deluxe and premium. And just depending on what your needs are, just um, hit the button and we'll schedule something and we'll, we'll go from there. 
great. Well, folks, you know that that's really a great opportunity for you because if Lori has had all this professional background before coming to an online business format, you know that you're really going to get going to get the best. So I want to try and hit some of the questions that you tagged for me too. So do you want to tell us about, um, and then I can go off on whatever tangents I want. <laughs> so you, you'd mentioned you really wanted to talk to us about transformation and B-School, right? Do you want to address yeah, transformation more? and just, um, maybe not necessarily B-School, but it, it, I definitely saw it as a catalyst. It was a starting point for me because, um, yeah, I didn't know anything about like online business. I've, I've always seen, um, you know, these quote unquote, get rich quick schemes. And, um, but this one spoke to me because it seemed more authentic and it seemed like, you know, people were, were very happy with it. And so, um, as I, as I went through the program and actually that's where you and I had met, um, you know, I just found it fascinating about like all the, all the things that you can learn about like marketing and um, communications, building a website. Um, and of course, like, you know, you have all the challenges that um, you had to deal with as well. So it was, it was great when you and I had connected. So um, I did a session with you, everybody, she's great. <laughs> Hope, helped um help for me to like clarify and just like learn that um you know i just have to like do a few things at a time rather than trying to eat the whole cow if that makes sense so um yeah i, I thought it was a, a catalyst in that like um and from there i i was able to like find um other people in other areas who were able to help in like areas like technology um, and the blog setup and um, starting a podcast, which you and I had just done, which was really fun. Um, and, you know, there were just like so many different um, things and so many different people to learn. And it just, it just opened my eyes to a very, very different kind of world. Um, Cause I, I did not, well, well I, well, I like the structure and I liked um, the routine of going to a nine to five job. I also found that like, you know, there's definitely something more and I did find some things more with this and that like, um, you know, you have to create your structure and routine. Um, you get to, you know, you have the flexibility to, to um, do both, you know, balance both your personal and your business as you want and, and definitely meet new people in the field. So that was, that was really great for me. Well, I love Marie Forleo. I really loved B-School. And so if any of you out there have not done B-School, seriously consider it because there's so much to learn in what Marie Forleo offers. And one thing that you bring up to me is like, hmm, you know, here's this professional folks that's talking to you that's been in the field over 10 years. And yet, is coming to Marie Forleo's B-School and saying there's so much to learn. Now, I've been in the business world for oh, decades. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but the online world is such a different place. And so it really calls, I think, for a different kind of training. And that's what you're speaking to us about with B-School. I mean, hearing you go on and on when – when you already have all this professional training, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have, well, I guess that's not true. I had my MBA and all kinds of other things. But anyway, what I'd love for you to speak to us about now is you were talking about simplicity and productivity. Mm -hmm. And that so speaks to me. Yes, we did do a session that was super fun. Um, I love helping people find their clarity and breaking things down into baby steps. And now look at you. You've taken this so much farther. So what advice can you give our audience about how to keep it simple? I mean, I talk about overwhelm and stress all the time in my blogs because I think that's, that's a reality for a lot of entrepreneurs. So how do we get out of it, Lori? Well, first of all, take a deep breath and um, okay, let's do that. Deep ah, take a deep breath and um, just like you know, I I would say just just notice where you're at, like right now as is. Um, I know, like for me, I I take yoga, which is really awesome because it it helps me to like bring a stillness and stay in the present moment, and um, really just kind of I I look for like I do the 80 20 rule which is the Pareto principle so part of it is like um using like 
finding the 20% that matter and um, forgetting the rest, at least, you know, temporarily until it's time to, um, you know, go back to whatever you need to do. But I think really it is, it is about staying present. And it, it, it's also about um, knowing what the, the big picture is and, you know, knowing what you can do, what your limitations are at the same time. So I would say like have like, it, nothing new, um, the long-term and short-term goals, but also um, understand like, you know, what, what you can do, what you can't do, basically what your strengths are, know yourself a lot. And that's something that I had to learn you, as much as like, I, I love doing things. I, I love learning. So I want to do everything. And I learned that you can't. So there, there will be a point where you will have to delegate or you will have to get some help. Um, whether it's like, you, but well, yeah, in certain areas of business where you can, um, you could either outsource like what you do, like with a VA or you can do an energy swap. Um, you can barter services. And um, if, if, if you stink at technology, but you're great at writing like me, find someone who does the absolute opposite. Um, and there were a couple of times I was able to like help you get, get some help here and there. Um, so it, it, it was really cool being able to do that. And also too, um, on the family front, since I do have a young family, um, my husband's great. So he and I kind of take turns on um, juggling and just communicating. And like, for me, I'd have to set some boundaries too and say, well, this is a priority for this day or this week. And then, um, and just from there, uh, they communicate like what his schedule is and just try to coordinate as best as we can every day and, um, yeah, take it from there. Well, I love a lot of things you're saying there. I mean, one of the things that really stands out to me, Lori, is like mindfulness. And that's something that I, that I teach a lot too. We've got a lot in similar, mm -hmm. a lot in common. Um, and then the other thing is you're talking about strengths. And Marcus Buckingham made such a huge difference to me because really, even before I read his book, Discover Your Strengths, I just thought, well, I am a rebel. I already know that. But um, I just thought I was an outlier and this is just the way I operated. But it was really affirming to me that he affirmed so much of what I was teaching. And that's what I do teach my clients is focus on your strengths. I mean, listen to what Lori just said about bartering out what you don't do as well or pay someone. Um, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there. So use the coaches. Like, it doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be Lori. But find find the coach that's right for you. And it can just really skyrocket your business. Mm -hmm. So this concept of sticking to your strengths, really discover what those are for yourself and then stick by them and keep focusing if you're not familiar with that book basically what he was saying is that a lot of ceos are trained i mean even at that level of course if you have your own business you're also ceo but i'm talking about ceos of big huge corporations are trained to go out and kind of compensate for their weaknesses but it's not effective. It's not productive. The best thing to do is to stick with what you're good at and delegate out the rest as soon as you um, possibly can. So, and then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about that you just mentioned is you're a mom. And a lot of my clients are moms too. So I want you please to give them hope. And tell us how you do that. How do you juggle your, your busy life as a mom? I mean, can you give us some tips? What do you do to handle it? Well, I always, um, I always have some sort of um, idea as to what I'm going to do each day. So um, I, actually, I learned, and, and you mentioned this before, but Leah Babauta had the MITs, the most important thing. So I have like four of them, and um, I'll, I'll have them in my, let me see, my old school Franklin and Kobe <laughs> planner. For oh, my I love Franklin and Kobe, yes. I still have it, it's so sad, but yeah, I do um, I do have like um, some of the four, four of my um, MITs there, and then I also have like um, a list of some of the admin stuff, like um, 
that you have to also do day to day. But you know, if, if I if those are not a priority, it's it's not a huge deal. So um, th that's the first thing is that like have what I need to get done, you know, and anything everything else to heck with it, you know. So just like you were saying about that 80-20 rule, I mean, I teach my clients a lot about having three priorities. I had no idea that Leo Bobota, who I adore, by the way, um, had this MIT most important things. I think so many of these things as I just tap into what other people are teaching are just universal principles. So use them, folks. I mean, finding your priorities, right? That's super important. Yeah, and the thing is too, I kind of um I kind of pace myself too. So there's some days where okay, it's okay to like take a deep breath, take your time. But then there are other days when I'll just be like hustle, hustle, hustle. This needs to get done and I'll take like two or three days to do that, but I don't I don't like to burn out, so I try to like keep it steady as best as I can. And um, you know, try to do that with both um work and personal life. But um I also use apps um like for my writing, I use Scrivener. Um, I'll also use Evernote. And I, I have Google Docs for like some of the business documents um, that I save on the cloud. Um, so I do use a variety of things. But, um, but at the end of the day, I think um, having like, I, I think like with, with writing, I don't know if you know Ju Julia Cameron's, um, she does that morning pages thing every morning. I do that. The artist's way. Yeah. Okay. I do the mind dump so that way I could like because like I heard like when you write it's connected with your heart more as opposed to when you're typing away like on, on the other hand if I'm if I'm on a roll I will type um, on, on a document but like if I'm really like overwhelmed and stressed out what I'll do is like just write every single thing like oh um, I have to do this that that oh this really bugs me maybe I could fix this just stuff like that and just get it out there and then once like all right I've taken five ten minutes to do that then I'll like look for the okay well this is important and I'll extract like what what's the most important things from that and then from there put it on my planner or sometimes on my phone uh, my phone's a big pro productivity tool too I'll use either the notes or the Evernote and um just have it there so that wherever I am, I'll, I'll keep the most important things in mind and, and be able to keep going that way. So I love it that you allow yourself free flow. And I really love that you allow yourself compassion and time and space. Mm -hmm. I call them in my program a lot rest notes, but I love being flexible. I mean, how many people got into having their own businesses because they wanted to be a harder slave driver to themselves mm -hmm. and they felt like it corporate and yeah. it's actually very very common that we end up working i know i've done it too yep. so much harder on our own businesses and so many more hours but i love that you said you don't want to go into burnout and i think a lot of people just don't realize, particularly when they're starting out, a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, there is so much to do. And two, that burnout is even, even a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, and not only is it a possibility, but, and this is why I teach about priorities and about values, but life is important too. Like those little kids of yours are going to grow up. Yep. And if you spend three years of your life, you know, kind of nose to the grindstone building your your own business without taking, I'm not saying you can't do it. Sure, of course you can do it. But at least stop for a while. Be mindful the way Lori is teaching you. Give yourself flexibility. Be 100% present with those little ones and enjoy those moments that are really fleeting and they're gonna go. So I've heard a lot of my clients talk to me about how guilty they feel yep. as moms, both ways around. They're either, they're guilty all the time, like they're guilty when they're working because they're not with their kids and they're guilty with their kids because they're not working. Can you, can you help us with that? Yeah, I and I, I see the same thing too. I think it's just something that we're um it's almost like a preconditioning in some ways because I think we're taught to like um 
give the other slice of the pie to the other person and then save the last one for yourself. And so, yeah, when we're not like giving of ourselves or our families or like work or whatever, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, you feel bad, but at the same time you can't like, you know, give from an empty well if you're not like full within yourself and you don't take the time. Like, like for me, I, I go to the gym every day. Well, almost every day I lied <laughs> like um, four to five days a week, but that's just like, uh, if I didn't do that, I would be really stressed out. Um, I would definitely be burned out and um, I, I wouldn't be a better, I would not be a good mom and I would not, um, I'd basically be useless in my business if I didn't take care of myself. Let's, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So um, yeah, taking just even like 30 minutes, you know, just go in, do a quick, whatever, treadmill and then leave. Or if it's a beautiful day, just go outside and go for a run or something like that. But um, self-care is very important. And actually that's something I'm, I'm, I'm still coming to terms with too, because sometimes I forget you're just so into doing what you're doing that, you know, you actually have to schedule it out and um, remembering, remember some of these things. Um, it's also the other thing too, as we're talking about this is like, you know, keeping a mindset that was a huge thing too. I had to think about when starting out because like, you know, you're always wondering what to do next or like there's always this doubt and um, there's there's a lot of like things that um, always come up that's why that's why I really love simplicity because you know you, if, if you just like get rid of that stuff and just keep keep to what's really important then I could I could stay focused and um, you know hope others are able to like you know stay stay focused as well just by kind of eliminating anything that's like negative or yeah if you have a bad day that's fine everybody has them. Um, but don't stay there because once you stay there, it's, it's really tough to get back up. Um, just like going to the gym. Like if, if good God, if I miss like three or four days, I totally feel it. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, my shoot for four or five days sometimes. Yeah. I mean, occasionally six days a week at the gym too. And yesterday I was just, um, I don't know. I was feeling a little burnout probably cause I'd been typing and working too much. And I'm like, that's it. I closed my computer and it's spring here and the sun was out and I chose not to go to the gym. We live in a beautiful area and I chose just to walk and call my sister. And by the time I walked and called my sister, I felt so much better. And yes, I worked late last night because I had a lot to do. But I was doing it from really a good, um, a good space, if you will, you know, a good mind space. Like I felt, I think it's so easy to just get caught up in this notion like there's so much to do. And that's true. There's no denying it. And for me, sometimes I just want to like power through it. I'm like, okay, let's just go. And sometimes I'll do that. But the times that I really do take, which is often, <laughs> luckily for me, that I do take and just take that time for me and just coming back so much more refreshed. It's kind of like, to me, it's even like stretching. Yep. I, mean, I do tend to have a driven personality. Um, so it's easy for me and it's good for me to see this metaphor like at the gym, just go, 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 go. And now I actually have a doctor telling me I have to do some physical therapy. So I guess that's a good accountability. But stretching, I mean, to me, that's like a metaphor. Like, okay, it seems like, oh, but that's not productive enough. Like, it's not burning calories. You know, it's not doing all those things. But actually the yoga, which I love too, that downtime, that quiet time, it's just if we allow that to ourselves, it, it just makes an amazing difference. And stretching, I would say to all of you who are decades younger than I am, um, please do it because ergonomically it's not so healthy for us. We're not built as human beings to just be typing on keyboards and be in front of a computer all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I even think just for me, maybe because I'm, I'm sensitive, but I can actually feel the energy mm -hmm. if I'm on too much electronics, if I'm on too much computer. Yeah. So can you tell us, please, like what 
you keep saying you let things go. Can you be specific for us? Can you tell us for other young moms out there, like what do you let go? What do you decide that you don't have to do? Um, I guess just like certain <clears throat> minutia tasks, like at the old corporate job, it's like you had to do every single thing on the list, right? But like as a boss, you know, you can either delegate that or some of them are just not going to happen. And this could be like stuff like, uh, I guess like as a writer, I tend to um, write and edit at the same time. At times I know I shouldn't do that, but um, other times I could just like let go of over editing certain things like in a document um, and just let go of that perfectionism, I guess. I think like, I think a lot of us t as women tend to hold ourselves to such a high standard that like, um, you know, I don't know. I heard somewhere that like perfectionism is the enemy of done and um, done is better than perfect. So it's kind of like you have to choose. Do you want to get this finished so you can move on to the next thing? Or are we going to sit here and like agonize over some graphic on a website? Or is this going to appeal to my audience more than this color? It's just like get it out there and um, just, you know, fix it later. And then move on to like the things that are really going to um, help other people. So that's, that's something I have to keep in the back of my mind is really the audience. Like, I mean, yeah, in the, in the online world, things are visual and, you know, things – we like things to look a certain way, but at the same time, it's it's more important to actually like, connect with people too and do the outreach, talk to people, and and so on and so forth. So I think it's just like the the minutia. To answer your question, it's the minutia admin stuff that I kind of need to like kind of get away from and just yeah, that's what I mean by let that go or um, or just negative thought patterns I might have had um, from the past. I guess like. Um, you know, having a type A personality, if, if I don't feel like I, I, I reached a certain level um, or hit a certain goal, yeah, I could be bummed. But um, I think the thing I need to think about is to also think, well, what, what other things have happened? You know, try to, like, get out of that, um, which is why I like things like – that's why, like, I, I like mindset so much. I do have, like, you know, spiritual practices as well. Um, I'm Christian, but I also, like, uh, practice some – like like yoga meditation type exercises and also I do keep a gratitude journal too to think about like you know some of the good things like oh well this stank but oh look I, I, I grew followers in this social media platform or like um well I didn't get this client today but oh but wait they referred me to other people who might be a better fit or I, I, I reach out to these people who might have another project for me. So you know I guess the thing to do is like um yeah I be be as productive as you can um as far as having those tasks that um you need to get done done and yeah, definitely like have some sort of schedule so you don't drive yourself crazy but don't be attached to it i guess that's what i also mean by letting go is and that that's tough that, that really is because i think like a lot of times and especially like you know um you're your own bosses now. <laughs> you you, you, you want to meet a certain, you want to meet your certain goals and um, like, like you might have like in the, the corporate world, but at the same time, you know, try to think about like why you started this in the first place to go back to that Simon Sinek why. And um, like for me, I, I, I realized that like, you know, it's great to have a, um, an income and like steady, steady work. But at the same time, it's like, I also want to make an impact. That's, that's why I did this or that's why I'm doing this. Sweet. And, Sweet. Yep. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out of there. And I think that's a good thing in this world that a lot of people do want to make a difference. A lot of us are out here for reasons that are ever, finances are important to everyone. That's just the way it goes. And a lot of us are really out here for more than just the finances. A couple things I just want to emphasize to our audience that you said that I just think are particularly brilliant. And one is in terms of what you're letting go of, you're letting go of perfectionism mm -hmm. and progress over perfection is definitely a motto of mine. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that you said, Lori was have a schedule, but be flexible with it. So we're going to wrap up in a few minutes, but before we do, um, can you tell us, please, about maybe give us, if if it's not too personal, give us like a little routine. Like you talk about routines. So what's an, and, and, and you're a mom, so it's extra inspiring. So like what's your routine from 
pick pick a day, any day that you want. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll pick a day where uh, my son is in daycare, and he's 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 there twice a week, which is great. So, um, you know, we'll. I usually have um, his his bag and stuff packed the night before. So, and I lay out my own clothes too. Um, I also have in my planner what my most important things are, and um, that's already written or it's in the Google Calendar or somewhere. Um, and then in the morning, um, I'll do is drop him off, and then um, I'll probably do about five to ten minutes of like um, the mindset work and just kind of like brain dump, um, and also you know do my gratitude journal, um, and then and then afterwards just um, I I. As soon as that um, cup of coffee hits, I have an anchor, and this is from BJ Fogg. I think he he had mentioned this. Um, when you have anchors, that'll help with a routine. So um, before I do like any kind of work, whether it's like writing or um, like website or what you name it, I will um, I will have that coffee down, and once that's down, then that's when I begin my work. And I also um, have like some productivity music. Sometimes I'll use headphones too. Um, some, there's a lot of white noise. And that helps with concentration. And I'll, I'll pick like a time limit, like usually between 30 to 45 minutes. And I'll just set the timer. And I'll, I'll go through those um, MITs that you mentioned, like one at a time during um, those phases. And then, um, yeah, after like the, the time is up, I'll usually take between five to 10 minutes to take a break, check email, and that sort of thing. Um, and then so afterwards, yeah, I'll, I'll con continue that throughout the day. Um, I'll take about like a half an hour to 40 minutes of um, lunch or, you know, do an errand or whatever. And then um, continue on until about, about, say, about four to five-ish. And then I'll um, pick up my son. And afterwards, we'll usually go to the gym and then see, come back, have dinner, um, prepare for the next day and then after I put them down um, I usually like try to power another last couple hours and that's usually when I get the admin stuff done like the minutia <laughs> I don't really want to do um, or not that I don't want to but they're not like the important critical things um, so those will be done like later in the day and then um, I and then I set my schedule for like the next day or look forward to the next week and then I'll go from there Thank you. Well, I mean, I mean, I think for me too, part of what I teach is to figure out what your own rhythm is mm -hmm. and what times of the day are really the most productive for you. And I love that you um, do those MIT most important things like earlier on in the day. Yeah. And then you save things that maybe are administrative. They're still important, but for me, maybe they just don't take as much brain power. That's how I kind of think of it. Um, I save my really creative stuff or producing content or periscopes or something like that for daytime. And then whenever I'm doing social media or emails, stuff like that, it's really very flexible. Um, <clears throat> but I'm very conscientious about what are my most productive times a day. And that really helps me a lot. So thank you for being willing to share that schedule with us, Lori. Oh, you're quite welcome. Um, before we go, I'd like for you to do two things. One is to share where people can find you. And then two is if you have any last thoughts you want to share with our audience. Yeah, so um, if you can connect with me on my website. Um, it's lorirochino.com. So I have my email there as well as um, I'm on social media. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, um, also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so any parting thoughts, really just, um, I guess, stay in the moment, prioritize. Um, and yes, if you get overwhelmed, Karen's great to talk to. <laughs> She's wonderful for that. Um, and then like for my own services, if you ever um, need help with writing, I am a blog ghostwriter. You could go check that out on my website as well, lawyerochino.com. And um, yeah, this has been great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Well, it's been an honor for me to be able to have you on our interview show. So um, I will just say sending you all tons of light and love. This is Karen Trepti, your productivity coach from Guiding Works Coaching. Talk to you next time.